Hi friend, how are you this evening? I'm Pat Sloan. This is my fireside chat. It is also day whew, day six of our April adventures. You know, I do miss saying Crazy Quilty March. Uh, so it's like, could it be April Quilt Adventures, Quilty Adventures in April, something. It needs a little catchier name. Leave me some notes. Leave me some comments on a catchier name. So we're doing a challenge a day in April, and uh, today it is labels. And so I have, I have gathered some information and some samples and to have a nice long ch chat about quilt labels. So get cozy, get settled in. <laughs> so it's very interesting because not everybody makes a label. So let me tell you something that I, I think I made labels right from the very first quilt. Now I'm not sure if my first quilt I made that was for a bedspread for my bed, whether I did one then, but I might have. And I think the reason why is that uh, my mother-in-law, Greg's mom, she was a artist uh, besides being, you know, her professional career was a banker, but she was an artist and she painted. And so when you paint, you sign your work and you date it. I mean, that's what you do. I took um, painting classes as a kid, and so I learned right away, sign my name on the front of the painting. Uh, so for me, creating a quilt is creating something that I, you know, from me, and therefore I knew I need to sign it. I need to say I'm the one that made it, and that uh, is what I've always done. I've always signed them and labeled them. So let's talk about why that's important and then what kind of labels to do and what to put on the labels. Now I do have a post on uh, Fireside Chat Mondays. I do do a blog post and <clears throat> excuse me. So I will put this list of things that I'm talking about over there on the on the blog post. So you can go in and get it and just see it so you don't have to take notes or anything like that during the video. <laughs> Heaven forbid. You just want to relax during the video. You don't want to have to take notes like it's a meeting or something. <laughs> we don't need to have meetings, quilt meetings. <laughs> so the link is always under my video. Uh, if you're watching at Facebook, uh, like it's, it's there as well. But, um, you know, that's where you can go. It's a link. The first link goes right to my website, which gives you all the information. So you can get everything that, you know, that I talk about. Okay, why is it important? Not only, you know, first of all, I think it's important to show that you made the item. You know, I think uh, that that's an important thing to tell our story and to tell future people what and why and who this piece was made by. Um, and it's not vain. Occasionally I hear people say like, oh, it's vain. It's not vain. Uh, it is, you know, if you wrote a book, you'd put your name on it. You wouldn't leave your name off. Uh, so, you know, I just think it's a piece of art, you know, so therefore we should sign it. But the other thing too, is that once you, is, there's something magical, but, you know, it really is magical. Once you sign a quilt and give it to somebody, you will be known for having labels. And when you give a quilt, I can promise you that the people you give it to, if they know there's a label, the first thing they're going to do is flip that quilt over and look for it and see what you wrote to them. It's a note. It's a love note. It's a friendship note. It's a, a, a note of support that you're giving. It's like putting a handwritten note with it, but you're putting it on the quilt. Now, my family knows that I put labels on. And whenever I give a quilt, they, I think they barely look at the front. They just whip that quilt over on the back and they look for their label that says it's to them. And what does it say? And what did I say to them? Um, and, and I think they just want to know it's there. Um, my one uh, group of nieces and nephews, they call me Aunt Patty. And so, uh, so they look for Aunt Patty's note on the back of the, of the quilt. So it, I think that it is a truly magical experience for the person you're giving it to, to know that you took the time, uh, not only to make this for them, but to tell them why and a little bit about the quilt and what it is. So I have some, some notes here. I wrote myself notes so I wouldn't forget anything. First, let me just tell you about what to put on it. Uh, and then I'll talk about what a label looks like and options you could have for a label. But to put on it, 
First, I think the most important thing is you want to put your real name. I'm not, I mean, the name you're mostly known by, you know, like if you have a middle name that you're called, you know, instead of your first name, you know, then use that. But don't, don't put Grandma Betty because years down the road, people will forget who Grandma Betty is. Unfortunately, it happens. They'll, they won't remember who, whose side was Grandma Betty on, um, you know. So put, you know, Betty, uh, you know, Robertson. This is from Betty Robertson. And then you can put in quotes or something, Grandma Betty. You know, put your nickname uh, so that people will know that when they see things later, if you've ever done any kind of gene genealogy, you will know how, how massively important that information is because people will write Grandma Betty and they won't know that, um, you know, who that is. But if you can put both of the names. The next thing is to put the name of the person you're giving it to. So, you know, say you're giving it to um, your grandson. You know, so it would be for Darren. Don't say, you know, for, for my grandbaby because nobody knows Grandma Betty and her grandbaby. I mean, down the road, whose quilt was this? No, this is Darren, you know, this is Darren um, Taylor's quilt. You know, it's like put, put the name of the person. Okay, so there you got the names, real names, the names you're known by. And if Darren has a nickname, you know, put the nickname, because uh, that's always fun, it's good documentation. Uh, so you want to put your address and if you can if he's just going to family and you want to put your whole street and everything that's great at a minimum put your town and your state uh, because then they can find you know then they remember oh that's when you lived in the greenhouse uh, over in Smithville you know oh no instead of the White House over in Hampton you know like like it it puts a perspective as to where things are put the date put the date you, I usually put the date I finished uh, but you could, if you want to write the when you started and when you're finished, I don't want people to know when I started. <laughs> two reasons. One, if it's too fast, they think I can do all quilts really fast. And two, if it's too long, I don't want to write that down. <laughs> so I just put the date I finished it. So just the date you finish it. So what else? Okay. So I, because my quilts might go in the mail, uh, often that's how they're delivered. Uh, I will put my uh, phone number and my email, and because I have a website, I'll put my website. So I put all of that so that the label will be uh, there uh, with all that important information, you know, all that pertinent information. Uh, and it is, you know, for you, like you could put just your phone number, you know, that way if it's, if they take the quilt with them somewhere and it gets left, then they can find you. They have the phone number. All right, what else? You might put um, like a quote if you like to have something sweet, you know, something thoughtful. Uh, if it's for somebody because it's maybe a, a quilt that's a hug, maybe you have a friend who's a hard time or they're sick and you want to make a quilt that's a hug, then, you know, tell them like, you know, I know this is a hard time right now. I've been thinking of you. I hope this quote wraps you in love, you know, and there's lots, you can just Google it. There's lots of little sayings and things like that out there that you could find one that suits the occasion. So those are the types, that's all the info, that's the information I put on there. So the other, the next thing is how do you write that down? Uh, because <laughs> I know people are by, so there's two things. One thing is get over your handwriting, get over it. If you like, don't like your own handwriting too bad, use your own handwriting. It is not that big a deal. And believe me, your family wants to see your own handwriting. I have kept a few notes from my mother-in-law since we don't have her anymore and they are precious and they are, um, prized possessions now because uh, I won't see her handwriting again and and do that for yourself you know write it in your own hand so that your family sees your own handwriting all right you don't have to write in your own handwriting you could um, embroider it you could use your wonderful embroidery machine and embroider it on the machine but if you do either of those things still take your signature write your signature on there in your own handwriting so they have that um, you could uh, I saw somebody cross stitched it cross stitch the label you can actually buy a get a stamp you know like a like like you would do stamping on paper but you can stamp on fabric and you could have all this you know 
some basic information you, and stamp it down uh, and then just maybe fill in the important things. If you're making like tons of quilts, <laughs> Maybe you are. Maybe you're, maybe you're doing a whole charity drive, and it'd be nice to stamp them out. Um, people do them on their uh, inkjet printers, uh, so you want to test that ink for um, you know so it doesn't wash out. You know, make a sample and wash it and see how it looks. Uh, let's see what other ways. I'm sure I'm I'm forgetting something uh, that was just at the top of my head. <laughs> if it comes back, I'll re I'll tell you about it. So. Let's see, do I have them in here? Yeah. So writing, if you're going to write by hand, uh, over time, I've used uh, just two different types of markers. And these are the two that, um, you know, that I like to use. One is a Sharpie, which are readily available. Whoops, upside down. So the Sharpie. And I use the, what is it? The, here, I'll put it up there. It's the ultra fine. Can you see the writing there? Yeah, the ultra fine, you have to look. So it's really a small point there. Can you see? There, I'll try to hold it where you can see it. Whoops, over on my shirt maybe, yeah. So it's really fine. And the other are these um, Micron, the Pigma pens. So Pigma pens have been around a really long time, and a lot of people prefer the Pigma pens. They also come in different sizes of points. They're, this one's pretty small. It is uh, 05, so they, they're numbered because they come in a wide variety, as do the uh, Sharpies come in a wide variety. Now, one of the problems people have with uh, writing, and somebody just asked this uh, when I put up that I was going to be talking about labels, is that it, they find that it bleeds. So let's talk about why that happens. Everything can be figured out. So I'll just sacrifice a piece of white fabric here for the good, the good of the cause. Oh, by the way, this is where I keep a lot of label stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, I don't know, does it make me start drinking after I've finished a quilt? I don't think so. But I bought these plates one time that came in this round container, and I've always, I like the dots. <laughs> So I've kept the, and the container's nice, except for it's round, but uh, I just put, put stuff in there. Okay, let's go over here a minute. So let me put this over on my Ulfa mat so you can see it, because I'm on the, there we go. So what happens is when people are writing, and I have to write towards me, I can't write upside down. So uh, if, I'm, if I'm writing, you know, I'm trying to keep moving like that, you know, so I'm just, I'm here, I'll come in closer. So I am moving as I'm going. I'm not like holding the pen, but you'll see there at the very end. Let's see. Can you see the little dot? Yeah, see that? So what happened there? What happened is I left the pen sit there and I'm just going to do this. I'm going to put the pen here. Whoops. Of course it does nothing. I goes on the edge of it. See, as I'm going, I'm not moving. I'm just leaving the pen sit there. And then what happens is it bleeds because it's absorbing the ink from the pen. It's drawing it out from the pen. So the longer that you leave a point sit in one spot, it will start to bleed. There it is again. So that's what happens when you're writing. People will start to write and they'll go like, then they'll stop. And when they do that, you know, they're maybe they're thinking like, oh, I'm not sure how I want to write my name. So there you go. That's how you get the points. But if I know what I'm doing and I just keep going, whoops, the second one there, this one, then I don't have those bleed points. Now, let me just, whoops, let me pull back a second and talk to you. So one of the uh, parts of writing on fabric, I've gotten very good at writing on fabric. I basically sort of hold, I'll show you in a second, I'll do it again. But basically sort of hold it with one hand and then write. So I'm just trying to keep the fibers from shifting. But what what is uh, a lot of people do, will take a piece of freezer paper and iron, and iron it to the back. So if you take a piece of freezer paper uh, It'll, and that just peels off then. I should have brought one up, but I didn't. And it's over there somewhere. I can't reach it. So if you iron the freezer paper on the back, it makes that firm. 
and then you can write on it easily. And then it's easier for other people, particularly if you're doing like a signature quilt or something like that. So freezer paper on the back. So let me show you again how I do this. I'm going to come in a little bit closer. Okay, so I'll just write again. So I'm sort of keeping one hand that is just sort of, it's not like, see if I pull it, like I've got it locked down. So, and then when I'm doing that, I'm also kind of holding from this side and then I'm just writing. So I am not going to be holding that pen anywhere to rest. I know what I'm going to write and I go. Now, a lot of people will want to write like a saying, or maybe you're a very uh, tidy, neat person when you do everything. So you can't stand it to be sort of wonky and all over the place. What you can do is you can have a piece of paper underneath. I'll just do this where you can kind of see. You can see the lines. So you can make a piece of paper with lines and then you can write along the lines. So it's nice and neat. And then you're not, whoops, and then you're not, uh, you know, sort of shifting and, and you're not, and you're all, always straight if that's the kind of person you are, you know, because I know a lot of you are really are very particular. I'm not, I like it to be very natural. I like it to be like a, a letter, like if I written a letter and also I'm very asymmetrical and I like things to be, you know, just sort of a little off. Uh, that's always fun for me. I don't need it to be super structured. So that is the writing part. And I would recommend getting a couple of pens and trying them out, see what you think. And they come in different colors. This one happens to be a green um, Pigma. I don't, I don't know where my black ones are. They're probably in some case somewhere. So what about the label itself? You can go everything from very simple to fancy. Where's my martini box? Uh, so here, let's just see what's in here. I keep a bunch of squares because my go-to method is a triangle label, which I'll show you in a minute. So my go-to method is this, where I will trim those off, and I'll show you that in a second. But I use a triangle label, and I'll show you how that works. But I often, because if it's a triangle label and I'm not being fancy, I will just fold the square in half, and voila, a triangle label. It's just not got any decoration on the edge. And I do this a lot on my work quilts, and I just put it in. You know, if you go out on Spoonflower or Etsy, you can find sellers who create cute little labels like this. And so you can purchase pre-printed labels that have cute sayings. I got these a very long time ago, and I have no note in here as to who I got them for, from. But these um, have the cute little saying, and then you can write your information all around it. So there's which one this one says, this took me forever. You're welcome, made with love. <laughs> I have to put one of these on my brother's next time because he'll appreciate that. Uh, he's a builder, so he knows things take forever. Handmade and especially stitched for you. So, you know, oh, I know the other thing I wanted to tell you is that you could get um, printed. You can get them printed with your own information labels. But Spoonflower is a good place to look. And then occasionally you'll find labels like this in fabric. You know, fabric company will put out a whole bolt of labels. And this was one that I bought years ago. And I've been using them off and on, so I don't have that many left. There's just a few left in here. I think the postcard one is my favorite one, this, this one here. So how, how do I do the triangle labels? What I do is I start with a square and then I will cut it in half. So this is a five inch square. You could also do a six inch square. So pretty much I cut the, cut the square in half and then I will take whatever, like the binding fabric, like I'm doing single binding. You could do this if you're doing double binding, take a piece of the binding fabric for the quilt and I sew that to the edge. Let me just move this. So I take it and I sew it, sew it down to the edge. So here you can see it is the binding fabric just sewn on and then flipped up. And then when I go, and then I'll go to trim it. So I will use the square and put it 
to the angle of the of the of the edges, the straight edges, and trim that off, and then come over and trim the other one. And there we go. This is a triangle label. Now here's the magic. The magic, magic. I have to move some of this out of the way. I am going to show you. Let me just pull this up a second while I get ready. So I am going to show you the baby quilt that I have here with the glow blocks. And I have a, a few more label things too. We aren't done. We aren't done. This is like a whole segment on labels. Okay, so here's the front of the quilt. Here's the back. So what I do is this uh, label Oh, I'm going to get rid of those threads just because they're bothering me. Okay, so my label is going here in the corner of the quilt. Here's the front of the quilt. Here's the back of the quilt. And I will take my Wonder Clips. Let me get them here. And I will just, you know, clip this on here. And I have not put the binding on yet. This is before the binding gets put on. So now this is here. I would usually take a little bit of basting glue and just glue down that edge. I might glue these, but I'm probably not. And then I will put the binding on. So what happens is the binding encases two sides of this label. And you only have to hand stitch across here. And I do have a tutorial for this on um, my website, so I'll link that underneath the video. The same concept though of embedding two sides of your label into your binding, <clears throat> Let me come up here again. What, one thing is it creates an incredibly secure label. Your label is not going to fall off. And uh, somebody has to cut it out if they want to get rid of it. Or they have to undo the binding and put the binding edge back on. So it's going to be real obvious if somebody has removed it. Which is a good thing, I guess, if you expect it might go missing at some point. Uh, it's just a nice security thing. Plus, like with a lot of washing and stuff like that, it stays secure. Now, if you have, uh, I'm going to take the triangle one off. If you have a square label, you can do the same thing. Now, here's some fun things. Well, let me just get a square. Uh, here, I'll use this square that we were talking about. Let's come down here again. Okay. So, here is the square label. And once again, you would just clip this. But now I would want to turn under, right? Because I have no turned under edges. This is on just a plain square. So I would want to turn under the edges on one side and then turn under the edges. And I would probably press these, you know, so, but I'm just finger pressing at the moment. And then I would also uh, put some glue basting under these uh, two sides. And there's your square label. So that way uh, you would just applique this down, whip stitch it down onto the back, and then these two sides will be into your binding. So what other kind of labels could we do? Let me show you a few fun things here. You can take a block, like you might have leftover squares from what's going on, and you can take those and add a border. So that would be a square label, and then you would, you know, turn under these two edges before you put it down, and then it would be a square label in the corner. Here is actually a little mini star that was the cutoff labels from this. There's like made five, so I had extra, or made more than five. So I could, I would put a border on it like this one here, so it would be on the back. And I think that's what I'm going to do with this one is add it in the back here because I think it's cute. You can make this part a lot bigger if you think you need more information and then you can write all the information around it. Now you don't have to have a little block for the, for the label. You can make a big, great big block. Like this block I did as a test. It was a test block for something for the fabric. I needed to see what the fabric really looked like with the whole quilt made into the block. So I did a test block and it it was not the pit one I picked. I love the block, but it, you know, I love the fabric, but it's not the block I picked. So here would be the case. This would be a, a huge, nice, big label. And then you would write all the information in the outer edges here. Once again, you would want to turn under. The other thing you could do is you could do right sides together with another big piece of fabric and then turn them. Um, but 
that gets a little complicated because then you got cut off points over here uh, you know unless you turn just two sides anyways that's probably confusing so pretend I didn't say it <laughs> That's so all. That's, but this one you could turn under, and you would just applique those two sides down, you know, to the to the back. So that's another big label option. There we go. This is a lot of fun. Labels are a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's important, and I think uh, I don't know if you haven't been doing labels. I hope that this will encourage you to take a look at doing some uh, because they are just an important part of, I think, your whole quilt is to finish it up, is to put the label on. Oh, the other thing I do is, uh, yeah, often when I'm done with the quilt, I'm pretty much done. I don't want to go make a fancy label, but often earlier on in the quilt process, I am more enthused about things. <laughs> <laughs> so I make labels early on if they're going to be a little fancier. Like if I was going to do something like make a big star from the project or applique something that'll be the part of the label. I've done that in the past for a few quilts. I will do that early on rather than the end. Now your personality might be at the end. You're fine with doing a, a, a more work on a label, but mine isn't. I want to be done by the time I'm, I've got that binding going on. I don't want to have to stop and you know spend time making something fancy if that was my goal. Okay, <laughs> label 101. That's, that's what I should call this video, label 101. All right, a few more things. <laughs> I know, this was long. Um, hope you liked it. Hope you got some good information. If you have quite more questions, leave them down there. I'm happy to answer them. So on Wednesday, uh, tomorrow will be block, Wednesday will be on block, will be block Tuesday. So tomorrow you'll get the childhood dreams because on Wednesday for about five weeks, we'll be doing the baby, charm, uh, baby charming uh, quilt along. And I wanted to show you a, a couple more blocks. So that's, uh, you have to have the booklet and a bunch of charm packs <laughs> but here's the sampler that we'll be doing and it's uh, how many weeks one two three four five f five weeks for blocks and then finishing so six six weeks so we'll shift the uh, childhood games but here look at this look at this block from the book isn't that awesome look how scrappy you can make that you could use up so many scraps with this particular block and that is one of the quilt patterns in in the baby charming book and one other block i'll show you so when we do look another star gotta love a star so when we're doing the sampler we're doing a few of uh, sometimes one sometimes a couple of each of the um, blocks from the quilts in the book so you get to try out the block see if you like it uh, decide if you know yeah i really loved making that one i'm going to use that again so this starts on wednesday so you can still order it even if you don't get it on wednesday it'll come pretty soon after it's in and you'll have it before the week so that'll that'll work out good for you and then my stay at home block yes i did kitties <laughs> these kitties sometimes uh I just have fabric. I don't know. I just thought they were cute. I thought they were sweet and cute. So I have a piece, couple people. Well, I got like a bundle that had them in it. So uh, the kitties are so cute. I didn't have kitties. We had, Greg and I had uh, dogs. Um, but my, my youngest brother had a cat and my mom loves cats. Uh, she doesn't have cats, but she, she likes them, you know. So I think she did as a kid, but not as an adult. She's not a pet person, really. Neither of my parents are. But she does like kitties. So anyways, I thought a pink kitty was just so cute. And then I set the first, the first row. There we go. What do you think? This is the blue from Bonnie Lane. And to be honest, I'm not sure. I'm not 100%. I'm not 100%. I, I probably won't change it, but I keep thinking, well, maybe I should have done the light blue. Let's look. Let's look real quick. So I don't know. I can't decide. My, my, surf, my surface here is messy. But I keep thinking, well, should I have done the light instead of the medium? I don't know. I can pick it out, but I'm not sure I want to do that either. 
I have other things to do, so it'll probably stay uh, as the medium blue, which is fine. But I just can't decide if I totally love it or not. Isn't that awful? I mean, sometimes I, sometimes I think it helps. Like later, you end up loving it. Does that happen? Like you, like you're working on it, working on it. You're like, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna keep going. Sometimes you have to keep going a little bit more. And then all of a sudden, like more of it comes together and then you're like oh yeah that's good i like it it's good so that's where i am with this one i thought well i'm just going to put the whole row together and i've had it hanging up and i've showed it to my friends and everybody's like it looks great and i'm like yeah yeah i don't know <laughs> i think it'll grow on me because i don't want to take it apart so but if i decide to take it apart i need to do it I need to not sew any more squares till I make that decision because I don't want to take more than one row apart. One row I can do. I can do it. <laughs> okay, another thing that I haven't mentioned lately, and you really should join me, is on the Kitchen Adventures over at Facebook. If you're on Facebook community, come to my Kitchen Adventures group where we're sharing uh, things we recipes we're making. You know, right now it's uh, everybody is in this sort of odd mode where you either uh, have access to getting to grocery, your groceries more easily so you've gotten a whole lot of things and now you have maybe a little bit more time so you're experimenting so people are trying all these different things we're kind of in an area of the country where it's very highly populated and so uh, we can get groceries but the options sometimes like it depends on what day you go what's available and we're of course not trying to go very often we're trying to only go maybe once a week or every 10 days and so and I'm not used to having a lot of food in the house. We've traveled so much for years, we just don't keep a lot of food in the house. So I don't have all these basics. I don't even have baking supplies right now uh, because I haven't really been baking for a while. And so, you know, my, so my creativity has to come from using things with a little less ingredients. So that's what's been really fun about the Kitchen Adventure. I'll link it over my, it's called Kitchen Adventures with Pat uh, at Facebook. Um, and I'll also link it below, so you can come on over but it's been really fun people are making cool things and then and then of course it's getting boring making all your meals um you know it's like sometimes like three days a meal you know three three meals a day i mean so sometimes you need some help you need some like give me some ideas i need something new okay i have a goodie to give away and then there won't be um one from last week the goodie from last week we're going to take a break for this week uh, and then on the following Monday, we'll do another goodie bag. So we'll take a break. There'll be no goodie bag this week because I'm trying to get a lot of stuff wrapped up. And so I need to kind of not deal with that. Uh, <laughs> so this goodie bag, which has all kinds of fun things and that gorgeous bundle of blue fabric, which I hope the last time nobody contacted me back. So I'm hoping this time our goodie bag person that you're see my email or watch this video because I'll be emailing you Sheila. <laughs> so if your name is Sheila Wynen, W-Y-N-E-N, uh, Sheila's, I want to know what last week, what did you, what was the last thing you bought? And Sheila bought an early bird jelly roll and some coordinating fabric. So I'm hoping to see your quilt from that, Sheila. That'd be awesome. This will go to you. This is a heavy bundle. This is a big bundle. Yay. <laughs> So thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for using our links. Thank you, thank you for doing that, for helping support our small family business. It doesn't cost you any more to use our links. Subscribe to the YouTube so you get them. And every day I'm doing a video. Tomorrow's uh, fireside, no, tomorrow's um, challenge uh, will also, I'll show you the childhood games because we're going to move it to Tuesday. I know it's going to confuse some people. You'll write me and all of you will help them and tell them it went out on Tuesday. <laughs> okay. I love you. Be good. I'll see you online. <laughs>